Good afternoon, depends, you know, what part of the globe you guys are at. How is everybody doing today? Hopefully everybody's doing great today. Good to see you guys here. Morning, morning, morning. You know, guys, some questions I've been getting, right? Some great questions here. A couple questions, uh, I'll, go, I'll go over them. Is one main question was asked, someone was asking me, and I'll address it now. Say, like, hey, Mark, is part of the manis manifestation process stag stagnate, feeling stagnated or stagnation or things not moving? Is that a part of the process of manifesting? And if so, uh, how do I keep the ego quiet? And uh, another part of that question is, um, if it's not, what do I do to enhance it to manifest more abundance or more or more money? Greetings from Japan. Greetings to every one of you high vibrational souls. So, you know, look, there's a message here too that I want to deliver to you that the universe is basically sending. And the message is basically this. The message is like, look, if you are tuned into this um, live right now you're watching this live of course you know there is a message for you here and the message is that you know whatever it is that you, your goals whatever your aspirations are are the dream that you want to create in your life um they're going to manifest for you because what you're doing here you're learning information that a lot of a lot of people just aren't and you know there's something going on in the creative process so Whatever it is, your goal, your dream, it is going to manifest. That's the message from the universe for whoever is watching this video live right now. Because there's no coincidence. We get attracted and we get tuned in to what resonates with us, what can help us, uh, what can create, what can, what can just bring more things into our life and our space. So that's the message for you. So, okay, the, great, oh, greetings everyone, hello, 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 Mark, thanks so much, thank you so much, guys, Grand Rising, uh, you're having a hard day, just be, be in the present moment, toxic, and that's what's going on, another question was, you know, are my mind keeps attacking me with so much negative thoughts, negativity, how do I fix that? How do I fix that? So I'm going to, we're going to talk about that. Too. We're going to talk about how you can fix some of that stuff in your in your mind and and, and the stagnation or stagnation of manifesting. But you are here, and there's going to be great things happening for you. You're going to manifest some great stuff because you're learning how your thoughts, your feelings, your desires they basically generate and create reality. So let's go to the first one. The first one is okay. It's feeling stuck. Are stagnated a part of the manifesting process and the answer is yes feelings when you feel stuck or you feel things feel stagnant it is actually a part of the process because here's what happens and this is what this is I'm just going to uh, talk to you based on what I've learned and what I've observed about the process of life living just 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 existing and feeling reality well, the, the thing is guys you guys have something that a lot of people don't have you have heightened awareness you have more you have more knowledge so to speak of your life your world because again if you're watching this you watch my program and you watch things like this you have to be on another level this is just not for a everyday regular person and if you're the first time tuning into this then congratulations and you're on you're on that point to be that chosen one you're on, you're on top of your game so the first thing we have we have heightened awareness Okay, you have that star seed, yes. So what you want to observe is, and this is what I observe about this stuff. Um, when things look like they're not moving, they actually are moving for you. But you've got to remember that we have a very small percentage of awareness. We have five senses, and we're not seeing the full picture, guys. 99% of information is actually hidden from our senses. So what, what we're perceiving is whenever we are observing things not going our way or, you know, it's not moving in our direction, guys, basically what we are truly experiencing is, like I said, I'm going to take my glass, 
what we're truly experiencing is the behind the scenes work that we cannot see that we cannot process so what we have to do we have to remind ourselves that things are constantly moving things are on the way to us just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not there that's number one number two you have to understand about the process is that it's not you and I the physical body or the physical intellect that's really taking charge of our destiny or desire it's our higher self it's you from the other realm it's you from the other dimension it's you from that from that from that etheric spiritual field that is doing this and then what what happens is when you're when we're in that spiritual field uh to us we look at things like i don't see any progress we feel impatient because we think time's running out we think we're not going to get it but actually everything will come to us at the appointed given time that our higher self decided so we just the point blank is what i learned is we just have to go with the flow we have to go with the universe we cannot force anything man i'm gonna tell you the only thing forcing stuff you know i always teach you and i says guys you do not force anything when it comes to manifesting however there is a there is an asterisk there's one thing you force that's the only thing you should force when it comes to manifest i'm going to talk about that in a minute but everything else you do not force what i mean by that force look the big picture is man here's the big picture of all this stuff work the big picture is we're in automated vehicles we're just we're just observers or we're just tourists in an automated vehicle the automated vehicle has already has a program it's already been running automatically you and i can't change it. it's like going into a car or whatever something that's autom automatic the computer already programs it and we're just passengers looking like this in our bodies that's what we are we're just passengers in our bodies because things that are happening to us some of it we cannot control so if we could control everything then we would be the body then we would be this but we're to show you we're not the body the body is a autumn autumn automated running system or structure that evolution created and it's run and processed through our subconscious however we can influence the subconscious to have more effect on the body but the big picture of all this stuff is guys we are just tourists in our bodies in the, watching and experiencing our life go by whatever we can change we change whatever we can't change we have to accept it and change how we view it therefore we can change the scenery around this stuff but many of us try to go in and we try to force and change and that's where we meet the resistance and we get depressed and we say oh my god i can't get this i got da -da 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 -da. can we delete all or can we delete old memories and reboot our memory yes you well what you can do you can reach change your memory you can reclassify your memory you can go into a memory and give it a new meaning hence i guess that's the best way you you get to uh deleting a memory right that's that, to me that would be the most effective or the other way so okay so let's talk about now the one thing that you can force that you should force to manifest and i just like to throw the question at you guys what are some things that you think we should force in order to manifest and to get what we want in our lives any what do you think what do you think it is go have some comments down here I might have to make a video explaining how memories just are interpreters of what we had in the past yes yes the memory thing are and the thing about our memories you got to understand guys is that actually science has proven that the majority of our memories are incorrect they, they, they don't happen the way we remember them because our brains is constantly construing everything it's just a made-up world man that's why you can't take anything literally and don't force anything man even your memories you know I've gotten to the point right now in my life in my journey that um, I've developed this thing and I want to show teach you how to do it too it takes discipline I've developed this thing man that we all have net we all we all have encounters every every single person all of us including me we all have intrusive thoughts or memories we're, we're just we're humans or we're 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 ego our minds do that it's just it's just saying hey you're normal you're human but here's the thing about it guys what i've discovered about this stuff like 
whenever my mind goes back into a negative memory or negative situation that happened, uh, I've developed this coldness that that memory, I just push it away. It's like I declassify it, I just close the file on it. That's what I do with that memory. I don't entertain it anymore. When I remember it, I just, it's like my mind has this process where it shuts it down. It's like, okay, this didn't happen that way. It, and I like that because what it does, it just retrains my mind to say, hey, that's in the past. And the secret to doing that, the secret to, to, to get into your mind to do that is to be more present, is to understand that that thing that happened can't ever happen again. Let me show you something deep. Um, the thing that happens to you, right? Everything happens for you, but let me show you something. The thing that happened to you, if like, okay, I'll give an example. So, so, someone said, so say, let's say yesterday you had a bad day, a whole bunch of stuff went wrong. What do your mind, what does your mind tell you? Your mind says, oh my God, it's going to happen again today. What if, what if, what, what if what happened yesterday happened today? I got good news to tell you. This, the thing that happened to you never will happen to you exactly the same way ever again. It will continuously change. Okay, you may get two days in a row. Okay, but it must change. That's something your mind won't tell you. That's something your mind lies from you. Your mind will say, man, that's going to happen again. But last night I didn't get enough sleep. Why I was up all night thinking about something. I don't know what happened. I woke up, man, is it tonight again? I'm not going to get enough sleep. That's what your mind tells you. Oh my God, no. Nothing stays the same. Your distress never ch stays the same. It'll change to positivity. Even positivity never changes the same. Sometimes it'll go up and down. But the, the beauty of life or this universe here is that nothing stays the same. And that's a good thing to have because you don't want to be on a repeat of negative, negative uh, cycles, right? So that's something that you got to be aware of, right? Okay. Now, what is the one thing that we should force when it comes to manifesting our desires? I just said, yes, disconnection is the key. You have to literally disconnect from the memories, man. If the memories aren't serving, you got to remember the the way to, the best way to disconnect from any memory is to prove the me, prove to the memory or prove to the brain if that memory is physically affecting you in this moment. In other words, the memory that I have is it happening right now? Because only thing that matters is right now. No matter how my brain makes me feel weird, no matter how my brain makes me feel like it's happening, my brain makes me feel like it's real, the anxiety comes up, the feelings, all that is irrelevant if it's not happening in this moment. If the if that thing is not happening and the whole structure, the whole thing that was happening, it ain't real. And that, that's the thing that our minds don't want, to, want us to know. That's the thing that our mind don't want us to face. Our mind does not want us to face reality of the present moment. The reason our minds do not want us to face reality of the present moment is tied to the intellect. You see, our intellect mind never developed a system of understanding infinity. Our ego mind doesn't have a, doesn't have a system of... Okay, here, let me make it up. Your mind, all of our minds, have one thing in common. One thing it wants to do all the time. The one thing your mind wants to do every single day, 24 hours, 365 days of the, of the year, is, can anyone tell me the thing that you think your mind wants to do every day? Oh, well, maybe you'll get it, maybe you won't. But here's the thing that all of our minds want to do. It wants to have certainty. It wants to, it wants to know what's going to happen. It wants to know what's ahead. This is why we have the past and the future. This is why we have a linear line of thinking because our minds wants structure. It wants to figure out what's the next thing it likes to plan, which is great. Don't get me wrong. That was great for survival. When you're surviving and you're in the, the bushes and the, the forest and animals and you're, you're coming up and it's elements and all that, you have to structure. You got to know, okay, where I got to go, where I got to go to the, that's perfectly fine. But in the big picture of your desires, it's not fine because your mind can't figure out to get you the big stuff you want. It can figure out to get you the logical, structural, everyday stuff, work-oriented, 
you know, navigate in your life. And we use that to try to pick up the big stuff in life. See how that works? Figure things out. All right. So with that being said, so the mind wants certainty. So with the memory thing, let's go back to the memory thing. Because it wants certainty, if the, the criminal, the present moment, if you don't know this, the present moment is full of uncertainty. There is no certainty in the present moment. Certainty doesn't, I use the word certainty because we invented it. But the true, I'm going to tell you something, the true makeup of reality is uncertain. Uncertain basically means from, from this moment, you can create or choose an option or an outcome you'd like to experience. You do that in the moment. Your mind can't do that. So this is why your, your mind resists the present because it, it sees that I don't have certainty. I don't like this thing where I can make up my own will or way. I don't like that. Your ego says, that's too much. I just want to, I want to set something right now, set it and forget it, and we do it. I don't like to be in this uncertain field. It's to just feel good for me. I like to be in a place where I have control and certainty. This is why your mind whew, hates the present. But the, the certainty messes you up, though, because it, what, most of the things that your mind puts certain for you is lack or negativity. Your mind don't put the positive certain stuff for you. Otherwise, we'd all be happy and be good. The most stuff our minds do is put certainty on our negative patterns, our negative thoughts, right? So that works. All right. So let's go now to the next point. So that's the memory thing. Now, what is the one thing that we should force to manifest? I said, don't force anything to manifest, but there's one thing we should force. Okay, I'm going to give you a clue about it. All right. In our brains there is constant chatter of different thoughts. So most likely the thoughts that are happening in our brains are the ones that we don't want. They tend to be the loudest, right? So let me give you the answer. The one thing we should force is will, willpower, persistent of our minds. That's the only thing you force. And let me give an example, what I mean by forcing it. If you want to change your thoughts to become positive or not. if you want to say well, you know what what would my life look like as a successful business owner how would it make me feel to have x and x amount of financial freedom right now you say that in your mind that may not be your dominant chatter your dominant chatter may be like well you're not good enough for that man remember what happened last time come on man where you, you come from you can't get that you can't manifest that da 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 that's the dominant chatter in your mind because it's a subconscious program. So what you're doing, you're attempting to put this new program in your mind that says, you know what, I'm worthy of it. You know, how would it make me feel to have more financial freedom, right? You're, you're doing that. So what you have to do, that's what you have to force. That's willpower. That's what you have to do, do persistently. So what you have to do, you have to force your mind to say that over and over again. So let me show you something. You have to make what you want or desire the loudest chatter in your head the loudest chatter gets the prize you see an early bird gets the worm the loudest chatter gets the worm the loudest chatter in your mind will get you your desires so that's what you have. so it's like it's like you're in a crowd and people are talking and you're talking but they can't hear you you have to talk over them you have to literally start to yell over them and they'll stop and say oh well, okay what's up we didn't oh okay I didn't know you were talking. That's the, that's what's going on in your head. That's what you force. You have to literally use your will to do that to create the persistent. That's called the willpower. Willpower activates the mind and creates the repetition. Willpower, however, you don't you don't continue to force willpower on the avenues of your life. You force willpower when it comes to making the loudest chatter in your head the one that you want to experience. See how it works? Mm -hmm. Someone, Mark LM says, uh, Mark, I want to ask you an important question. Why do I feel sometimes it's pulling me off the bed and in between sleep and wake? Well, you know, there, there's a lot of things going on when it comes to understanding the universe and consciousness. And the first thing you have to understand is that um, 
we live in what we call electromagnetic spectrum and our part of reality is this small plasma or the other 99 percent of reality is hidden light and magnetism from us and that means that there could be other entities beings living experiencing moving through that dimension right now and they could come in our dimension in our space because they don't have the same rules as physics and it could you and i they could look like they're walking through walls you could say angels uh spirit guides whatever so sometimes we can experience what we call trippy stuff sometimes it could be what we call sleep paralysis where your mind's doing sometimes it could actually be a being contacting you uh getting in contact with you because you have to understand that we only see we only see a sliver of reality and that means in our reality in electromagnetic being other beings have to exist in this vastness that is just that we don't understand it because we can't see it so that's those are those are things you have to keep an open mind with and be and I have the possibilities to understand right now what once you start to make the loudest talk thought in your head your most dominant thought your subconscious will start to take it now an easy fix to do this right an easy fix to do this guys an easy fix to make the loudest thought in your head the most dominant is with nightly subliminals if you do if you go if you do subliminals nightly and sleep every night with a positive subliminal that will start to get your brain chatter to be dumb and then when you get up in the morning now you still got you still got another part to do that's part one part two is the awareness part two now because your ego is going to be active during the day and your ego will tend to remind you of the negative thoughts because it's still sad remember yeah you're at night you're doing the subconscious but at day what about the ego you got to still take care of your ego so you do your subconscious subliminals in the night to take care of the subconscious. In the daytime, this is where you use the willpower to be conscious of your thoughts and say, okay, you know what? I don't like this thought, man. This thought is better. I want to work with this thought. See how that works? And the next, okay, here's another big picture I don't think people talk about a lot and understand. You know, if have you ever thought or think to yourself like why it's so difficult to keep focus why is it so difficult to think positive why is it so difficult to focus only on what I want why do I keep thinking and feeling negativity in my life have you ever wondered that like man comment below if you ever wondered that like okay this stuff should be easy because I'm thinking about it it's sure as, it's sure as heck easy for my negative thoughts to come in all the time so why can't it be easy for my positive thoughts to come in all the time, right? Have, ever, have anyone ever thought about that? Well, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you something deep about that, right? So, you know, why can't I just get up every day and be positive? Why, why sometimes I get up and I don't think nothing happened, but I'm in this negative mood. I have these negative cycles. I have negative thoughts. They're more dominant. Why do I have to work hard to maintain my positive thoughts? Man, what's going on, Marco? What's the deal with this stuff, man? Why, what's happening with that stuff? I'm going to tell you what's happening with that stuff. Every, remember this. Everything that comes into our existence has to follow a law of physics or law. There have to be a cause and an effect. So, I just told you that every single thought that you have, the negative and the positive have to be a cause. Now, let's talk about the positive. Positive have to be a cause. Positive thoughts mean that you actively are engaging in your thoughts. You are the cause and the effect of your thoughts now become good stuff in your life. See, that's your cause, right, with the positive stuff. So if the positive stuff have a cause, the negative stuff has to have a cause. Mark, so what is the negative, what is causing these negative patterns? Well, I'm going to give you something deep now. I think this is, this is the truth here. Some of it is your subconscious. We know that, but I'm going to tell you that, well, go ahead, comment below if you could tell me, what is the number one thing that is causing our negative cycles? Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's a subconscious, but there's something else causing it. I'm going to throw it out there to you. Maybe you'll get it. Oh, look at someone already commented in here, man. It's good. 
the body electric supplement i'm going to the comment just what i was talking about here what she said here we say said right here commercial and ads tell us we are flawed so we will buy their products let's expand deeper on that what is causing your negative thinking and cycle is your environment everywhere you live your tv your media your social everything that you put your mind and thought and watch and think hidden in it is something to make you feel flawed it's like you said commercial commercials oh use this to get better skin tell you have bad skin use this to prevent this you're going to have a disease use this to for your anxiety i'm going to get anxiety use this to death they it creates a flawed look for all of us so everything that we watch is secretly designed to make us feel less like we are broken and we need something to be fixed but you don't need anything to be fixed because you're not even here what's there to fix the body needs to be fixed but let's, let's talk about the, the body fixes itself you have new cells every every seven years you are a completely new person organs liver every year blood every, so the body will automatically fix itself but they're telling you you need to fix you don't need to be fixed because you're just an observer here you're just a tourist you're just here for a show and you're leaving so what needs to be fixed but that's the narrative you've been programmed to you need to be fixed you're not this and this is why we have low self-esteem this is why you have more negative cycle thoughts because everything is designed to tell you something is off about you everything go a you now you listen now you're listening now you believe me now go ahead since i gave you this knowledge go ahead now and examine all the stuff you've been watching everything you watch has a subtle thing to show you something's off about you only the deep ones will get this because now you're going to be aware and i'm glad you're going to be aware because now when you watch things you're going to say oh my goodness dang it's true look at this this guy says everything is a subliminal message to your subconscious mind to keep you in a state of negative self-destructive patterns has to be that way that's the only way they're gonna you're gonna generate money good news doesn't sell man so once you now you can free yourself from this freeing yourself from this is the awareness of what's happening just why I just showed it to you someone says yeah go see your doctor before you takes this side effect it creates da -da -da, suicidal thoughts negative thoughts negative patterns all of that and it's yes my friend ecamp uh Porter says it's yes it's strategically designed So I'm here to tell you, there's nothing about you that needs to be fixed, guys. If there, what you, there's all you, this, what, what you, what you're doing, is you're called, you're self improving. You're not fixing anything. There's nothing broken. The only thing you, you're improving, is the way you process information through your unconscious mind. And there's some information that you just don't want. So you're, you're just deleting bugs. This is called a negative beliefs. But every part of you is already set up for success. everything even colors people colors are strategically designed did, did you know that colors have an effect on our moods were you aware of that do you know certain colors make you feel happy did you know certain colors make you feel depressed did you know that yeah everything has an effect some colors are strategically placed to get you to buy something to make you feel low something to make you happy every single thing but you have to be aware of this this is why it's important for you to become aware of your surroundings yourself notice what affects you notice what triggers you you have to take inventory of yourself yeah they use colors in marketing strategy all the time if you wanted someone to get to buy your product they use a certain color it makes your brain more excitable you're more lent tend to buy the product this is this is this game this is notice i say game this game they play this game we're in the game so you have to catch on to the game 
so that you can play your game. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right, Converter. We are all born to be successful, just as we are, correct? Now, what happens is, because we inhabit, or we are occupying, or we are renting, we're literally renting a body, because you can't, you, you, there's nothing you own here. Your consciousness, who you are, you, you can't own anything. You just are everything. Okay, so there's nothing to, to own in this realm. I talked about this before. House, car, you own none of that stuff. You're renting stuff to make it easy for you to understand. So while you're here renting something, you know, I'm renting this. My mark is a mark is a rental space. This mark here is not who I am. It's my rental body. Who you are is your rental body. And when this body goes, you're gonna go and rent another one, or another one, or wherever you're gonna. So you're constantly renting stuff. So sometimes when you rent a house, the house gonna have little glitches, right? The plumbing may be off. What do you do? You fix it. Same thing with the body. So once you understand that you're renting a place, when you're, whenever you're renting a place, you're gonna take care of the place, right? If you're in a house, you're renting it, you're gonna be living there for a while, you wanna take care of it. So while you're renting this body, you wanna take care of the body. So what, you, what do you wanna do? That's why you gotta take everything. You gotta do stuff to keep the body healthy. So you gotta watch, okay, what do I do? Okay, man, I gotta get good sleep. Okay, I gotta take my supplements, vitamins, eating the right, da da da, positive. I wanna keep my body healthy. But sometimes, even the body's gonna break down. No matter what you do to your body, there's sometimes it's just, just 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 how the body is set up the body remember the body is in a three-dimensional space the body has gravity wearing down on it the body has toxins going on even though the body can regenerate itself and live a long time the body at some point is going to decay so that's fine so what you have to understand is in the meantime you're here you got to do your best to keep the body you you got to you got to keep your rental space good while you're here to enjoy whatever it is you're enjoying whatever you're here to do Okay. See how that works? Someone says mind blown. But this this is how you have to look at life, people. You have to if you look at your life, because this is what it really it is, man. This is then you're not gonna take anything serious. You're gonna understand that, you know, this is this is temporary here. This is Whatever you're experiencing right now is temporary. The pain, the suffering, it's temporary. It's gonna be all right. You're gonna get over it. You're gonna have more good days. Give it. Give. You gotta give the body. You gotta give yourself the time. What we call. You gotta. You gotta be easy on yourself. This is why you do not take things seriously. This is why you gotta understand that you're renting this space, man. You're this. You've rent. You know. There's. You've rented so many things before. You've rented billions. Of, all right. Let me show you something. Cause someone asked me this, Mark. I hear you always saying, I hear a lot of teachers say, you know, that we are the universe. So do you have any scientific proof, Mark, that you can enlighten us more on that we are the universe or the universe is inside of us? Yes, I have it. I'm going to make it very simple. It's called DNA, deoxynucleic acid. Your DNA has terabytes of information that in, in layman's terms, in your DNA, has the capacity to hold up to 13.5 billion years of information. And that's how old this part of the universe is to us. That's correct. So in your cells has all the information of the entire universe codexed into it, in your DNA. So I just made it simple. Hence, you are the universe. If you have all the information of the universe inside of you, what are you? You're the thing inside of you. Where does the matrix get their orders from? Yes. So the matrix get their orders from other higher beings that can interact in our reality where we can't see them. Hence, you're extraterrestrial. Remember, I just told you that we live in an electromagnetic spectrum, but we have a slither of reality. 99% is hidden. So if 99% of the information paradox we cannot access, other forms of life or other forms of existence have to exist. It just that's how physics is set up. That's just how it has to go. These beings can interact in our dimension without any rules or regulation because the frequency bandwidth 
from ours to theirs is different. They can come into our dim dimension that they can walk through the walls. They can walk through your house. They can appear in your room. They can disappear in your room. To you and I, it looks like magic. It's not magic, it's science. It's just a freak. They're on a different frequency bandwidth. They just vibrate into a different frequency. Because the way we evolve, we have a slither of sensitivity to the environment. The way they evolve, they're higher. Hence, they're called the gods. Those are the beings that gave you the, your religion. Those are the beings that gave you the Bible. People don't, when I talk about this, people say, blasphemy, what is this guy talking about? But it's the truth. People don't understand this, man. And I'm showing you guys, go research it for yourself. Get enlightened, man. Let me tell you something deep here. And I have to tell you the truth, okay? This is the truth. If it resonates with you, fine. If you don't believe me, go research it. But one day you will sit back and just pop back in your head because it happened to me. I'm going to share what happened. Higher celestial beings helped in our evolution, helped in our mind. We are experiments. We're a game to these beings. We're in a simulation. They created your gods and religion. And they created these laws for us so that we won't destroy ourselves. So they created the concept of the heaven and the hell so that they can keep you in line. These beings, the reason why they would consider gods to us because through the electromagnetic frequency in these different dimensions, when they interact on our level, they do godlike stuff. Hence, they can walk through the walls. You and I cannot walk through your wall. They can appear and disappear. They can also come into your consciousness and talk to you. Hence, you have telepathy. They've been doing this because if they've, if you think about it, if we go into common sense, if someone is a billion years ahead of you and you just popped up on the scene, they have a billion years of knowledge of evolution than you are. So of course, they're gonna have so much stuff that's gonna boggle your mind. They can talk to you telepathy, they can influence your consciousness. So these beings are what is controlling the matrix. Some people say they have negative and positive beings. Negative, po You have to have duality. Now, they have to be both sides. You know, that's how the universe works. It's called duality, right? So they used to appear to gods to us because of their technology. Right? Their technology is so advanced. So what happened in the early days, what they decided to do, and I'm going to tell you something about your brain, okay? And this is the truth. You see, let me tell you something deep. I don't know if I should say this, because this may really take you into the rabbit hole and it may really throw you off, man. But something says I have to say it to you because I have to. Okay. You see, guys, the reason why these beings. I want to put it in a way because I don't want I, don't, I do not want this to come off the wrong way I get the wrong message I have to formulate this the correct way so that you can get this all right okay the reason religion existed the heaven and the hell thing exists is to keep us in a state of balance from Killing and destroying ourselves. Let me show you what I mean by See, guys, we are more. You ever, you ever hear the thing, the monkey brain? This is why we. You know why? You know. You ever wonder why humans are so violent against other humans? Because we are on the low scale of the evolutionary plan. So if they didn't give us the religion to keep us in check, all of us would be dead. Because then we have, there's no purpose to live. There's, we're just going to be animalistic. We'll blow each other up. See, they gave us the religion to make us think that there is this God and we have to answer it and keep in check. That's what keeps us sane. That's what keeps us a purpose. See, I have to tell you that. That's right, we're still like animals. This may shock a lot of people. It shocked me too. Remember, man, I grew up in the religion. I was a Christian. I was a Jehovah Witness. I went to the church. I did all of that stuff. And and here's the big picture I want you to understand. The re I'm telling you, just the big picture. Again, 
it's all a game. Let me tell you about these beans too, what they, what they don't want you to know about just though. You see these beans, they don't want you to know that you are just as high as they are. Because these beans are the same thing as us. They are consciousness, but they're just consciousness on a higher level of existence. But we're all the same thing. So what these beings do is they keep you trapped, you and I trapped in the matrix and make us think that we're limited and we're just physical being, human beings, and we don't have the capacity to expand and go out just like them. That's the big thing. That's the cap they put on you right now. They this is what it is. They because if if these beings took the hat off and you realize that oh my goodness by the way these beings they don't they don't you got this is this is deep this is something totally different these beings don't operate on physical stuff they operate on energy so these beings like to take your emotions they feed off a of negativity they feed they just like how you and I feed off a of physical food they don't eat like that they eat with your emotions with your fear with your doubt with your worry this is why if you look around the media the majority of the media stuff is programmed to keep you anxious, excited, in a fear mode. Because this is how these, ent these entities or these beings, that's how they feed. That, that's how they eat. So they eat off of, they don't eat you physically, they eat you emotionally. So I say it's a different level. There's a different level here now I'm teaching you guys. Okay? Some beings are positive. Here to help you, to enlighten you. Spirit guides, higher self, I will not put higher self in, it's different. Spirit guides, uh, intuition, other ETs, they're here to help you. Other beings, on the duality aspect, they're here, they're here to feed off of us. Okay? The duality has to exist. One's here to enlighten and help you. One's here to feed off of you, to eat, to, have, to eat some food, man. Just one hundred, one hundred dollars on a two dollar jumbo. Oh, congratulations, boss! All right. So, the thing about these beans, I, big, the big picture I want to show you is that the matrix is designed to cap you from realizing that you are infinite, just like they are. That's the whole point. Because I told you, you're renting this space, right? So. If you want, if you, if we want to, like, have these the ones that the negative beings move away from us and move on, you have to starve them. And you starve someone by what? Not giving them nutrition and food. Cells go down, the body decays. Same thing with these beings. So you starve them by exercising optimism and positivity and being more abundant and showing more love out there. This will now move these beings and they'll go somewhere else because they say, hey, we, these people, are, we can't feed anymore because someone's teaching them or they're learning about this or they're more awakened than that. This is what's happening now. This is why it's called the age of uh, Aquarius, the age of uh, enlightenment now. Um, but uh, the, the matrix is designed because these beings will say, hey, they control the media. They'll say, hey, I need you to keep putting negativity so that we can eat, so that we can get our energy. Some people look at you and they laugh and they say, oh, this makes no sense. This is ridiculous. Da, da, da. Well, I have one question. I have, I have one thing to say. If this is so ridiculous, right? I just, I just I want, I want you to be open-minded because there's some individuals out there that might look at this and it shock them. But there's one thing I can say to you that will make you think. All I want to do is just make you think. And whatever, if I can get you to think, and then you, you can take it from there. That's all I want to do. And here's what, what I want you to make it. If this isn't something, then I have to ask you this question. Okay? Here's my question I want to ask you. And... Any rational person will answer this. Here's a question I gotta ask you. If this isn't so, or if this isn't true, or if this isn't happening, why is it that 90% of the information that's available to us is information that exhibits our body to show more stress, more negative thinking, and more fear? If, you, if someone can answer me this question here, I'll take that off the table. I'll say you're correct. Why is it that everything we watch around us elicits fear, elicits anxiety, 90% of it? Why couldn't... Okay, I put a swing another way. Fear, negativity, all of that elicits what? 
our body breaking down. We don't we don't like that, right? So why why couldn't it why couldn't ninety percent be positivity, optimism? It's gonna, it's, I'm putting it out for you guys. You guys are chosen ones. You guys are enlightened ones. Can someone answer that for me? I'm asking this question too. I want to. I'm curious. Maybe someone there is a each one teach one. If this isn't a thing that's happening from an, another reality, another dimension that are feeding off of our energy, why is it that our society promotes 90 percent? I've done research on this. 90 percent of the information that's been fed to you and I, you and I, in, all information has been fed to you, is comprised of listen fear anxiety depression negativity which the body creates cortisol which creates stress which keep, creates activates your fight or flight system which keeps you in a circle of unrelenting neg negativity why is that happening man if, if everyone says, well, Mark, we're all here to love and experience, and this, the Matrix tell you that, the Matrix will say to you, they give you 10% and say, yeah, guys, you know, mental health is important. We want you to be positive. We want you to be happy. We want humanity to live and love each other. But yet 90% of it is still coming from the Matrix. So there is a higher thing over that happening right now. And it's all run through frequency, guys. Our... What's whatever you do frequently changes your frequency. Now let me drop the bomb on you now. I'm gonna drop the bomb on you, right? Someone says drop the bomb on you. I'm gonna drop the bomb on you. Even though all of this is happening, you and I still are just as equal and have the same power as these beings because we are the same when we're out of the matrix. We're the consciousness. So how do you Fight or protect yourself from this thing. Can anyone answer me that question for me? Remember now, this is not happening on a physical, this is a mental war we're dealing with here. So how do we protect ourselves? Can anyone tell me? I'll give you a clue. It's nothing you have to do physically because these beings don't interact physically. They interact energetically through thought waves, emotions. Since we are the same power, we have nothing to fear. You just hit the, you hit the key, you're getting warm. Nothing to fear. Here's, yes, who got this here? Joy got this. It's very simple, guys. Simple game. Thinking positive, feeling positive. If you direct your conscious, the thing about these beings is they cannot take your consciousness because you are part of the field but that's what they don't want you to know they can influence how you think through the media but they cannot go into your consciousness and control you like a robot and tell you to do this they can influence and suggest but you ultimately because you're a conscious aware being you ultimately can observe and decide what you want to do so let's get that straight so that's why i said you have the same power so what do you do you turn off the source of your information remember how it goes Where, wherever our wherever energy go grow wherever energy is it grows and expand wherever energy is not it ceases and dissipates so our attention our awareness is our secret to success so if you take your attention and only focus your attention and your mind on things of positive nature you cannot be affected by this matrix you will be in the matrix and be successful in the matrix because the matrix is not run on a physical level, it's run on a non-physical, on a spiritual level. You're just seeing the after effects as spiritual. This game is not physical, this is a spiritual game you're in. And there's not, I mean, there's, let's go back into science. Mainstream science physicists, they tell us that the atom is empty, not, not empty. They tell us that everything is plasma, plasma is electromagnetic. They tell us that there's not, this is what mainstream physicists are saying. They tell us that physical reality 
has no conceptual um, material structure. They're saying, they say that there is no such thing as physical constructive world. It doesn't exist. It only exists to us as perceptions based on frequency and processing of our brains. But everything that you touch and feel, it has no solidity. It's an illusion. That is what mainstream physicists have said. This is what mainstream physicists has won a Nobel Prize for. This is why you can go out and win the lottery. This is why you can go out and have a great life. This is why you can go out and manifest your business of success. Because it's not a physical construct. It's a mental construct that you can bring in from your consciousness and implement it and download it into the matrix so it looks becomes a physical real stuff. That's why you can go out into the into the universe and come back in and win the lottery. All right, God never mentioned. So the big question is now, man, Mark. So who is the like who is who's control all of this is there this is there a god so mark what's going on here man so who do we have to look to what's the here's the answer to that here's the answer to that now you are god the consciousness is the god a collective you are the god what you do is you you take a part of you and you streamed it down here to experience this those beings are the God. On their conscience, they come down here. You're all the same gods. It's a game you're playing. It's a game that you come down to play in the physical react in the physical realm. They're just as God as you're just as God. In that realm, everything is equal. Because it's one consciousness. Those beings are the same conscience that you are, but they're streaming from another part. And you're streaming from there. And when you go back up, you're all the same. It's only down here you got the competition. It's only down here you get tricked to believe you're something else. So you are God. What you do is you streamed yourself, you take a part of you, and you you created the body, you created all of this. You did this because you're a consciousness. You created this body, you streamed your information down into here, and you're experiencing this thing. You're just doing, you're doing what consciousness does. That's, that's, that's what you're doing. You're doing what God do, do. This is what God do. How to activate your God self. How do you activate your God self? I just gave you the answer. Activating your God self, there's nothing physically you have to do. It's just an awareness of one thing you have to do. How do you activate your God self? Can someone comment below? If you don't know this, okay, let me give you another tip. This game is really simple. So I got to say that to you. So if you're going to think about this, you're going to comment, just think it's Mark. This is, must be simple. So what would Mark say that make this so simple? Because I'm here, I'm going to bust my brain. Mark must be talking about something deep. It's very simple. How do you activate your God self? Okay. I'm going to tell you how to activate your God self. Ready? All of you, I'm going to activate your God self for you right now. Here's how you activate your God self. When someone teaches you or enlightens you and shows you that here it is activate your God self by knowing you are God it's turned on that's it you know you're, you're activating your God self is the awareness to know that you're God if no one told you this stuff you're not gonna activate your God self now that I've told you this you've activated your God self because not only I told you this I showed you in your constructive mind the physical evidence of it. Number one, I went back, I showed you DNA, deoxyl nucleic acid, that has terabytes of information, and in one strand of your DNA it has the capacity to hold 13.5 billion years of information. So I showed you that, showed you the universe is inside of you. Number two, I showed you that the world is made up, of, not me now, mainstream physicists showed you this, that the world is made up of basically imagination, is not physical. And also, I showed you 
that you are aware of all times what's happening to you. Even you, you experience something, you're aware of the experience. The body's experiencing it, not who you are. And I showed you physical science, Now I showed you consciousness is something that still we can't computate. We have no understanding of it. We can't put it in writing. We can't put it in physics. We just know it's there. We see it out there. I showed you all of that, and I just told you that if you're the awareness, then you have to be God because God is what starts. So I just, so I mean, if you don't, if you don't know that the awareness of God is within, so yeah, the awareness of God is within you, you activate your God. In the eye. But if you don't accept it, you can't activate your God self. You only can activate what you accept. If you don't accept or believe this, it's not going to activate for you. Because again, the beauty of consciousness is it doesn't judge. It's, it tells you, believe what you want to believe. You're going to get it. So if anyone's watching this, and I just told that you are God, experiencing yourself as a form from your Godness, congratulations, you're going to go on and do great stuff. But if you're a person that you're stuck in religion, and you're still in a program, and you can't accept that you're God, then you're going to have a difficult time reaching your full potential. I have to keep it real with you. I repeat it again. If you are someone, and you're watching this, and your brain is... In a, in, a, in a fight with your religion and you cannot accept that you are God experience yourself as a physical being then you are going to have a difficult time reaching your full potential and I'll explain to you why you're going to have a difficult time reaching your full potential because in your subconscious mind when, you got, when your godlike self came here it had brought the tool with it which is your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind has the default program of greatness and if you don't activate your default program of greatness you're going to experience a lot of physical pain this is why you're gonna get a lot of this is why we get diseases this is why we get stuff majority of the disease of the body is caused by how we feel and think epigenetics shows us this how we feel and think what influences our feelings negatively impacts your body. What influences your feelings positively grows your body. That's science. That's not philosophy there. So again, you got to activate your God self by accepting that you are God. Disguising as a being of a person. It's not this is not religion this is science science is showing us this right now religion is having a hard time right now and I'll go even further even, let me show you how these these beings work they even put it in your religion they put it in your religion they put it in Hinduism they put it in Buddhism they put it in all the religions but they put it in you got to code it out they put it one of them one of them they put it in the Bible they say the kingdom of heaven I think it goes the kingdom of heaven is within you right there's another one say trust do not lean upon your own understanding but take notice of God in all your ways and he'll make and he'll make your path straight you want me to decode that meaning for you because they don't understand see you got to be deeper level when he says do not trust upon your own understanding do not trust upon your own ego or intellect mind take notice of him take notice of your authentic self take notice of your intuition take notice of and then make your path straight you will manifest and create they put this stuff right in your Bible they put it in the Quran they put it in Buddhism they put it in all forms of your religion but they just think that some of you this is why I'm here because I'm here to decode it for you some of you they say, oh, some of them won't get it so I'll just put it in there maybe the smart ones will get it the puzzles but it's in all of your literature they're telling you who you are. They're, they told you that. And you, the kingdom of heaven is within you. You are God. <laughs> Do not lean upon your own understanding. But of all his ways, take notice and trust in him and he'll make your path straight. Oh, do not lean upon my own ego. My intellect, my trust, my true self. And my true self will show me the way because I'm sending information down for myself. It's in your Bible. In your Bible. Another thing before I go, 
that you have to understand about this stuff is all the stuff that you want to manifest The stuff that you want to create in your life right now, it's already done. You don't have to create any of it. You just gotta align yourself up with the frequency to get it. Easiest way of attracting abundance. The easiest way of attracting abundance is to have an abundance state of being and state of mind abundant state of mind is simply this and I told you this game is very simple an abundant state of mind is simply this the easiest way for you to attract abundance is you have to make the chatter in your head loud that you deserve abundance you have to literally think abundance all the time everything you look at you have to look at it as abundance if you have five if you have a penny you have to look at that penny as a million dollars. If you have a dollar, you gotta look at that dollar as a hundred dollars. And what do I mean by that? I mean that when you look at, when you take a penny, you take a penny here, I'm gonna have a penny down here somewhere. I want this penny here, I'm gonna have a penny right here. When I take a penny, and I look at the penny, I, you see one penny, but when I look at this penny, I see infinite amounts of pennies. It's a, it's a, my, it's a state of mind. Everything is a state of mind which creates a state of reality. So if you want to easy way to attract abundance, take the lack and superimpose it into abundance. This is not one penny. I don't see one penny. I see millions of pennies. I don't see limitation. I see infinity. I see myself as success. I see myself. So if someone asked me that question, there's the answer. That's the easiest way. Because what's going to happen is you're going to create synaptic pruning in your brain. You create neuroplasticity. Your brain now is going to start to believe it and manifest it. That's that's it. And subliminals are the most powerful ways too for you to, to develop that, right? Whenever you're full of doubt, that's correct. You do not. When you're full of doubt, <coughs> you win nothing. <coughs> when you're full of optimism, you win big. Repeat that trade market when you're full of doubt you win nothing for lottery for anything when you're full of optimism you win big optimism creates what you want doubt pushes away whatever it is that you want some doubt is normal you're gonna have normal doubt but the problem is if the doubt is more doubt than the positivity that's where you have issues your doubt should never outweigh your positivity your positivity should always be a notch above the doubt. So it's quite common. If you're going to have doubt, fine, have doubt. But make sure there's more positivity than doubt. That's the formula for success. And that's the time I have. I'll see you guys next time.